Okay, practicing safe RxSOP. So this is the Holy Grail edition. For those of you who've never sat a presentation, I like to have a, a running movie theme. Um, and because RxSOP is hard and it's like this impossible thing, failed, uh, RX, uh, Holy Grail was a good movie. Uh, a little bit about me. I'm a mobility solutions architect at a, a wireless service company called Velspan. Uh, I have a bunch of wireless certs um, that have been going back for about six years. Um, uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, and my blog is 2DS from DS. Uh, so, what is RxSOP? Um, how many of you guys think and feel like you know what RxSOP is? Well, a couple of us, okay. And general, uh, I would say generally half of you are wrong. Um, so, <laughs> so, um, so basically RxSOP is adjusting how an AP decides whether or not to decode a packet so, or de decode a frame. So when a frame comes in, an AP has to make a decision. Do I decode it as a wireless frame or do I ignore it? Um, and that decision is made purely on one aspect of a frame, and that is the RSSI of the preamble. Uh, because that is the, the only opportunity we have to decide whether we decode it or not. If I decide to decode it, the opportunity to, dis to find out what's in it, the opportunity to discard it is gone. Um, and so if the, if the frame is discarded, the AP continues with the contention process, meaning that uh, he keep, continues, to back, uh, continues to count down and, and then therefore has the opportunity to transmit. Um, now, this is the common RxSOP analogy uh, that vendors use, which is earmuffs. This is the worst analogy for, um, for RxSOP because in this analogy, it sounds like we're going to a concert and we're putting earplugs in to, you know, like we all should, but that changes the volume of what you're hearing. And RxSOP doesn't change the volume. I still hear a client at the same RSSI as I would otherwise. This is a better analogy for RxSOP. So this week, um, this happens to me all the time. I'm, I'm in a restaurant, it's kind of noisy, and occasionally I will hear something from someone else, and I'm like, ooh, they said a word that's interesting to me. And I change my RxSOP threshold to listen to what they're saying, and it's like, oh, what are they saying? And then I change my RxSOP back so I just treat them as noise. I don't really care what they're saying, I'm trying to tune them out. And ultimately, that's the decision we're making. The sound that's coming into our ears, do we decode it or not? Um, and so, you know, it's that, that, that those, those sounds are coming into us and it's our decision to whether we decode it or not. Now, if we choose not to decode it, what is it? It's noise. And so here's an example. Um, um, so we have a, an AP cell, an AP on channel one, and we have an, other APs, and we have another AP on channel one. Now, this AP, this, these graphs represent how, um, how the AP hears, uh, hears signals at certain levels. And if we're at NAG82, which I believe is the default, um, we're going to decode that frame. So as you can see, the signal coming from the other AP on channel one, the green AP, is decoded. And that AP will defer to the other AP. So I'm, I don't get any more throughput. So if we move the RxSOP threshold up to say NIG78, suddenly that signal is below the line. We no longer actually treat that as a Wi-Fi frame. We have effectively converted it to noise. And so when I transmit over the top of the green AP, I effectively use um, the, the, S, the SNR or SINR for that client is using the, the frame from the green AP as the noise floor. Because it now, I have effectively converted um, contention into noise. Okay, and what does that mean? Well, if I'm transmitting over another AP, I am treating what their signal is as noise. Um, and we are uh, trading some MCS and some SINR for the opportunity to, tra uh, opportunity to have contention. Um, so some pros and cons. Um, Can you just answer a quick question? Yes. You said if it, if it chooses not to decode it, mm -hmm. it treats it as noise, but it's not noise at that point. It's nothing. 
No, it, it's noise. So if I... If, Does it go against your SNR? Yes. Well, it goes against the client's SNR. So at the client, the cl I'm going to... So in, in this scenario, uh, the green AP and the blue AP are transmitting at the same time. And so as they're both transmitting at the same time, the client has to hear your signal above it. And so that's why instead of the, um, the client's SNR going to where the noise floor is, the, the noise floor is the signal coming from the other AP at his position. So it doesn't change the AP's SNR, it's going to change the client's SNR. Yes, because we're, we're transmitting at the same time. So effectively, RxSOP is just a trade-off of trading uh, oppor more opportunities of contention for some, some noise. Uh, so we reduce congestion. So RxSOP is best used in RF congested environments. Um, <laughs> hi, Rob. Um, um, it increases aggregate throughput. So if I can make that trade-off of having more opportunities to transmit for a little bit of noise, I'm going to increase the aggregate throughput. And it's actually quite a bit of aggregate throughput depending on the environment. And we're going to overcome these APs with very, very sensitive. I heard someone saying like there was an AP that could decode down to like negative 105, uh, which is pretty, pretty ridiculous. And the problem is, is that the more sensitive we build this equipment, the, the more co-channel interference bugs us. So <clears throat> those are the pros, the cons. And the cons list is longer for a reason. Uh, and this is why RxSOP is so dangerous, is that it can be very disruptive to clients. Um, so much so that it sometimes is considered not worth using. Um, it's also unidirectional, meaning that I change how the AP makes decisions about decoding. I do not change how the client decodes. Now, there's some, some advantage to that because Clients are, are typically deaf, and they can't hear near as well as the AP, so sometimes they don't really care anyway. But, um, but it is unidirectional, and that typically, in most things in Wi-Fi, causes some challenges. Uh, and today, there is no differentiation between frames I want and frames I don't want. Um, so there's a few types of RxSOP, and there's more than this. These are just the ones I definitely know how they work. Um, so Cisco and Meraki use an RSSI-based um, RxSOP. Aruba uses it, in, and their feature is called cell size reduction. It is based on SNR. Now, I prefer uh, uh, RSSI for the simple fact that it's fixed. Um, the danger of using SNR is that, and, and I find that I can't use as much RxSOP based on SNR, because as the noise floor changes, I could get to a point where when the, when the facility is empty and the noise floor is low, I can meet that. But as it gets busier and the noise floor comes up, suddenly I don't make enough, uh, I don't make enough SNR to be, and then I drowned out all the clients. I, and I start not demodulating. So that said, I think it, it's a good thing because you have to be more conservative. And I think in RxSOP, being conservative is, is good. <laughs> Um, so some guidelines for using RxSOP. The, the best use of RxSOP is to tune out adjacent cells. Um, and the, the golden rule is do not try to manipulate anything that has to do with a client connected to the AP. If I'm trying to alter my cell size or effective cell size, and I'm going to clip clients, and they are going to have a very bad time. Um, and when in doubt, use less RxSOP. It's a, it's a wall. It's a giant brick wall throwing stuff at you. Um, so hitting the wall. What does hitting this wall look like? This is, this is my iPhone. Um, and uh, this is a, a test where I'm testing RxSOP. And I started off in my office. Uh, very near the AP, and then I walked out of the office. I actually walked about seven meters from the AP, and then this happened, and it just continued. Um, so if you look at what happened to, our, to my client, um, it didn't have a lot of luck sending data at all. Um, and it tried a, a wide variety of things. It's, it sent null data because it was trying to either go to sleep or wake up. 
Um, it also tried RTSing when it did have a packet. It tried sending block act requests. <laughs> um, and from an airtime perspective, it was pretty terrible. Um, so I'm going to try to exit out of this, and I'm going to pull up the actual packet capture. Um, so just so you guys don't think I, uh, <laughs> let's, let's start closer to the beginning. So I have some filters in place here. Um, let me take, uh, let me take some of this filtering out here. So hopefully we can see some, some interesting things. Um, but you'll notice, well, hold on, you probably got it too far. Now, a couple things about this capture, it is, the, the RSSI value is actually the RSSI value of, is that right? Okay. Um, the RSSI value is actually RSSI value of the sniffer AP. It's not quite matched up to the, the actual thing. Um, you why didn't does carry it too long with your iPhone. Hmm? You didn't carry the AP sniffer with your iPhone. No. Um, so it's, it's in close proximity to the AP that was client servicing. But um, you will notice that there's a lot of uh, attempts to do transmissions. Um, it gets pretty ugly. Um, and when I try to send data, there's a lot of uh, retry. Um, now, there's, there's a couple interesting packets in here. I'll see if I can find one of them. Um, but this is not a good use of airtime. It's, it's a terrible use of airtime. Um, now, I was just discussing this with Peter, and I don't know if I can make this bigger here. But here's one frame. And what do we notice about the signal strength of this frame? 36, 40, that's not too bad. Uh, we'll find some later where the, the data frames are being exchanged at like NAG 70. And one of those, and these are VHT uh, uh, sounding packets. And it's 30 dB different from the data frames the client's sending. Why is that? Well, part of that is, here we go. Uh, so I have, here I am transmitting, trying to get, you know, and retrying. And then suddenly I have eh, a good 30 dB difference to this frame. Why is that? Because the client decided that that frame's really important. Now, in, in my case, my AP actually hears this. Now, that, that's kind of interesting. Why would, why, would a, and why would it use that rate? Why would it be so much higher? Well, I think it has something to do with some beam forming, or it has something to do with the fact that the cl client's cranking the power up. Well, why wouldn't the client crank the power up for the data frames? And there's two answers. One, because client manufacturers care about power? Yep. Yeah. Um, and the other piece is that the client hears the AP at a level that he thinks is satisfactory. So in this case, the client is hearing the AP about NAG 65. And he thinks he's fat, dumb, happy, and connected, but nothing happens. Now this goes on for an obscenely long time. And I did set this test up so that there is another AP nearby that this client can roam to. But he doesn't. Doesn't because he thinks this is okay. And you can tell by the retry percentage here, which is enormous, um, that it is definitely not okay. But the client doesn't know because we have impacted one side of this equation and that's just the AP. So, So be wary of marketing. Um, this kills me because this is such a bad thing for most of you because you're going to go read the marketing and you're going to come away with the exact wrong dis dis choice about how to use RxSOP. The marketing even says it makes the cell size smaller. It, it doesn't change how far RF propagates. It only changes how the AP decodes. So a couple myths on RxSOP. RxSOP creates channel reuse. Well, it converts contention to noise. And so that you may be able to use the channel more effectively, but it doesn't actually create reuse. Um, 
RxSP reduces how an AP hears. Nope, it doesn't change the volume. It only changes what the AP is paying attention to. Are you paying attention to the people at the next table or not? Um, RxSOP only impacts data frames. I hear this one a lot. Like people think that the AP decodes it, <laughs> figures out if it's a data frame or not, and then decides whether you no know, that happens. The data frame pieces are much much later in the in the frame. The preamble we don't know what kind of data frame it is. The truth is, RxSOP affects every ugh, RxSOP affects every data every frame that an AP hears. Uh, the cell size reduction, nope. So when we're using RxSOP, where does this fit in our process of tuning a network? It is the last thing you touch, okay? And people are like, I, I wanna change my cell size. That's great, power level, data rates, you know, well, it, that's a religious discussion of whether we trim data, data, data rates or not, but um, power and data rates are how you affect that. Channel planning is actually very important too because if I can get two APs on the same channel further from each other, then I have a better chance of reuse. Um, design, design, design. Um, if you're gonna plan to leverage RxSOP, you need to be very, very deliberate about how you design your Wi-Fi network. Now, can you use some RxSOP without design? Sure. The amount, though, is going to be dramatically less. Um, and the other piece is, because we are changing the way an AP hears stuff, it's very difficult to get data out of your wireless LAN controller or your AP or your NMS because it can't hear it. So, you know, testing with actual devices is, is really important. So, um, external antennas are probably the single best thing you can do to enable safer use of RxSOP. Why is that? Well, because it changes how well I hear adjacent cells and it changes how well I hear my clients. I hear my clients in my cell dramatically better and things outside of my cell I hear dramatically worse. So, and, and antennas are bi-directional, so it helps us on the thing we care about and it helps us ignore the thing we don't care about. Um, good channel planning, very important. Reasonable TX power, Rob's comment about only use the power you need, it's really important. Um, the other pieces, though, for those of you who like RRM or ARM, uh, understand that, you know, I had someone tell me this a few weeks ago, that NDP packets aren't affected by RxSOP. <laughs> And I was like, no, they're, they're, they're a Wi-Fi frame. They're affected by RxSOP. Just like, so you could drown out uh, how you hear your neighboring APs so that you don't hear their RRM announcements. And suddenly, RRM does things you didn't expect. So when we talk about, um, when we talk about directional antennas, what we effectively are trying to do is we are trying to take the client RSSI for the clients in my cell, and we're trying to split it from the adjacent cell's RSSI, of how I hear that traffic. Well, this is kind of like taking your hands and putting them really close together and asking somebody with an ax to split the thing between your hands. I, now, maybe you're more trusting than I am, but I would not like that. By using a directional antenna tuning out things that we don't care about, we widen that gap. And it makes it dramatically safer to pick a value between those two sides that we can, that we can use to, to choose to ignore. So determining how much RxSOP to use is really, really tough. Um, but essentially what you need to know is for every AP in your environment, how well does it hear every client that it hears? Now, there's no good way to predict that. I, I, well, at least I've never found one. Um, now some design things are gonna help you guess and you know, you're gonna have a lot more margin of error, but you can do some debugging. Now this debugging has to be with RxSOP off because if I turn it on and I don't hear the frame, I'd have no debug to listen to. Same thing with um, polling. If RxSOP is on, I pull the controller and I ask, it, it didn't hear it. So telemetry is in the same boat. So how do we determine that? Well, you know, typically for me, it's um, in my example, it was putting a sniffer AP with the same antenna in the close to the same 
location and comparing RSSIs. Um, but you can also do that with the infrastructure before you turn on RxSOP. Um, determining how well a, a neighbor APs are heard, same thing. Packet captures from the AP saying, I heard it at this level. Um, uh, also debugs like you know, on a Cisco controller, you know, looking at neighbor messages and those types of things will help as well. Um, the other hard part is average MCS, retry percentages, and channel utilization. Um, because I need to know those things to determine whether or not I was successful at actually um, you know, moving the needle. So this is a method I, I, I started using about two years ago, which is I pull the controller every minute for every client and pull their RSSI. And I log it to a giant file, and then I go through and using some Python magic, calculate the, the, the min, the max, and the average. So um, blue is the, the, the blue line is the, the minimum. So, and then the orange line is the average, and the green line is the maximum. So I went through, and this is over, this is over a four hour period. It's not exceptionally long, and a couple of these APs have very little usage, and so the maximum and the average are pretty close. Um, but um, collecting this type of data over a long period of time helps you determine where I can safely put an RxSOP threshold. Now, be cautious because the shorter your sample period is, the more chance that you're gonna have a client that may ex be weaker than this. The other piece is that um, having a little bit of margin of error in this is a good thing uh, because you may see some frames that were actually below that and the controller's only reporting the last one it heard or it's only reporting the average over the last minute or those types of things. So depending on how you get this data, whether it's streaming telemetry, it's a packet capture, it's, it's pulling uh, the equipment, it's gonna determine how accurate that information is and how much margin of error you need. Uh, these are all omnidirectional, so they're pretty, pretty varied. Um, and then finally, we gotta quantify what the impact was. And these are also fairly difficult. The first thing is, does it reduce static channel utilization? So if I look at it from a perspective of an AP that's not moving any traffic, and I change the RxSOP threshold, did overall channel utilization drop? And the first thing I check is if I make a change and RxSOP and channel utilization doesn't drop, that was a bad change. Either I didn't do enough, or there's not enough room between where my clients are and um, where my adjacent cells are to actually tune anything out. So if I do get a drop in channel utilization, I need to make sure that my client retry rates don't go up. Now, why is it, why, why do I care about retry rates? Well, if my retry rates go up, it means I'm probably clipping both, you know, either, either in the downstream direction or the upstream direction, I'm hurting that performance. So the hard part is I'm interested in retries coming up. Now, as you saw in my packet capture, there's a bunch of retries but the, the, the Wi-Fi system only hears the last one. So if, it, if my, my retry count increases by one, we didn't count the 10 million times I sent that packet, I just heard the one that had the retry flag marked. So over the air packet captures are, are the best way of determining whether this was successful or not. Uh, the other piece is uh, without a dramatic decrease in client MCS rates. So, and this is client MCS rates down to the client. Um, because we are trading a little bit of noise for the opportunity to transmit, we expect a little bit of a decrease in MCS. It's to be expected, and it's not all the time, but if you see dramatic decreases in downlink MCS, you, you went too far. Uh, <laughs> um, the other piece is roaming times, and these are harder to measure and harder to quantify, but um, if you run into a, a situation where a client has hit the wall, you will see roaming times start to go up. They will panic, they will start panic probing and scanning in other channels looking for a home much sooner than, and they may or they may not. They may say, I'm happy, I'm happy to retry all day long. And those retries do not help your, you gain more channel efficiency. <laughs> so, and like I said, the, the, the biggest challenge with kind of quantifying this is that the system that you're impacting 
doesn't really see it. You have to look at it from a client perspective or in the environment. You cannot rely on the thing that you just essentially deafened to tell you whether or not it's, it's doing it. Um, you know, today RxSOP is a single dimension. It's just RSSI or SNR. And uh, we had a great talk earlier on 11AX talking about BSS coloring. That's gonna make this dramatically safer. Why? Because my clients are gonna send the magic color that is mine and I can run dramatically more RxSOP. Now, the, while I probably could run a lot more RxSOP in 11AX, it may not necessarily it's a trade-off, so there may come a tipping point where more RxSOP doesn't necessarily net you anything. Uh, but we'll be able to safely run dramatically more until we find another tipping point, uh, as as well as uh, you know what our capabilities are. So, and that's it. That's the holy grail. How much time do I got, Keith? Okay, we have some time for some questions. First, I'll just start us off. Uh, if you're listening, if you change the way an AP hears all frames, not just data frames, mm -hmm. when you're running uh, RRM and APs are listening to each other, does it affect the results of RRM? Yes, it does, very much so. Uh, so on, on, in Cisco land, they send a uh, neighbor discovery packet. Basically, they go to each channel and they'll send a neighbor message, say, hey, this is, I'm here, I'm operating on this, this is, this is how you hear me. Um, and so if you start tuning out weaker signals, you're tuning out how APs hear their neighbors and how they coordinate. So it, it can definitely impact how those, those algorithms function. So every, every time you adjust RxSOP, you also have to come back and make sure you're not messing up your channel plan and your transport yeah. power. And, and, and if, you go, if you go too far, yeah, you may very well end up where APs can't hear each other. They assume that they're there by themselves. So you were running, a, you showed that four hour of the APs and you were gathering data on all your APs for the four hours. What do you, and you said that was a short period of time. What do you consider, if you are running that, how long do you monitor that? 24 um, hours, a week? Depends on the environment. Um, sometimes if it's a large public venue, you might run it through an event. Um, let's see here if I can, I'll do some stuff here. I can show you guys a little bit of, how some of this works. Um, uh, I guess really what do you say is what your minimum time you got it? Uh, I like to run it at least 24 hours uh, of typical operation. So if you're an office building, running it for 24 hours Saturday or Sunday doesn't really give you a lot of data. Um, so let me, uh, let's see, I gotta find. Some stuff here. Um, we cover this in a little bit in the course that we do. Um, big bucket of Python glue. Bucket of Python glue. <laughs> so um, being able to actually do some of this plot out, um, and then I'll actually show you guys what the data structure looks like. I have another one that collects it. Uh, but essentially, I go through every client or every client on every AP every minute. I go pull these values of what the RSSI. Sometimes client disappears from the time I pull it to the time I collect the data, and so you may see some unavailables. But essentially, I get this data as frequently as I possibly can, and log it into a big flat file, and then parse that looking for statistically relevant values. And that's what this. This plotting is here. Um, you guys saw a higher res version of this, but going through every AP, trying to figure out if there is a safe RxSOP threshold. Um, yeah. Jake, when you did the testing with the iPhone, did you notice if the iPhone was probing to go somewhere else because it was getting such a bad service? No. It wasn't. No, no, so the, uh, this is my, it's iPhone 7 Plus. I had another AP at the time. I had, um, so my house is, my first floor is relatively small uh, and I have about 15 meters between the two APs. And so there was the AP that it was connected to and there was an AP literally on the other side of a wall uh, from the client where I was doing the testing. And because he hears the AP so much the AP is still below his roaming threshold. So I went to the office to connect it to the AP, and then I would walk about five to seven meters away from the AP, 
maybe not even that far, uh, like five meters from the AP, get it below. And this was a very high RxSOP threshold, uh, just so that I could I could do it within the confines of my house. Um, uh, but yeah, no, he was he was totally fine. Um, did not probe, did not look. Uh, I did have the other AP running a debug to see if he was, and had nothing. So um, he, was, he was very happy, even though no data packets were going through. He still hears the beacon. He still thinks that that's an acceptable RSSI. Now, that will vary by clients. Some clients will say, my retry rate's too high. I'm going to move. Apple did not do that. Yeah? Are there environments that you do not use RxSOP in? Uh, today, void clients, I typically there. don't want to use RxSOP, um, simply because that traffic is very critical, and if they do, you know, um, VoIP clients and even mobile handsets that are running VoIP, sometimes they change their scanning behavior when there's voice traffic. Um, so I'm on a call, it's going to become more sticky. Um, so because it doesn't want to roam continually. And so when those happen, you may see that the threshold at which they roam changes. Um, I typically try not to avoid, I, I typically try to avoid RxSOP in those environments. Uh, but anytime you have real-time applications, uh, especially that are very critical, it tends to be riskier. Um, and it's always better to avoid co-channel and, and congestion in design rather than trying to do this at the end. Uh, this is a very fine tool. It, it's meant to move the needle in very rough environments. It's not meant to do it for every environment. Any other okay. questions? Uh, well, no, thank you very much. It was great. Awesome. Thank you. Uh,